What we're going to cover in this video is how I implemented three of HubSpot's best performing funnels into my business using ChatGPT so that I can replicate things that I know are working. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, this is what we'll cover. We've put all their funnels in there and we're going to explain how they do it. And why would I want to do that? I wanted to do this because I know that HubSpot employ a lot of smart people. I know they're a successful business and I know they have access to a lot of data that I don't have access to. Also, I've studied them in the book. So this video, the book written by their first sales director who took them from zero to 100 million. So this is not just an analysis of their website. It's an analysis of what's going on based on a behind the scenes overview. And I want to do that because I know that they have access to a lot of data. They have a lot of people coming through their funnel and they've successfully been able to build an inbound based business without having to chase clients all over social media because that is what this video is about. So let's first of all look at the three stages of the funnel. HubSpot have traffic sources. We'll model the traffic source. What's a traffic source? A traffic source is just a very elaborate way of saying where your prospects come from. Where are they coming from in order to visit your business? Because remember, this video is about avoiding chasing prospects all through social media. Then they go to the stage of converting them into pipeline. What do I mean by converting them into pipeline? Well, quite simply, a prospect is not really in pipeline until they're off social media and onto a list or an asset that you own. What's a list and an asset you own? Yeah, well, let's just explain this point because the conventional way that maybe you are doing this and a lot of people seem to be doing is they chase clients on social media and then they try to go to a sales call and then they try and get clients. But that's not actually a smart way to do things. A better way to do things is to move people from social media to an owned asset and then get them to become clients. And this is exactly what HubSpot are doing. And what is the advantage of this? You might think, well, what's the advantage of this mark? Why should I do that? Why should I not just post on LinkedIn and, and, and do all that sort of stuff and Instagram in order to try and book sales calls? Because the, the, the issue is this, right? Uh, and, and I've personally experienced this, and this is something we've been doing for a long time and reading this book and studying the HubSpot funnels and making a few changes really enlightened me that we're, we're on to a good thing and we should just double down on it and focus on it because especially in the that with the reality that we're facing right now with artificial intelligence and loads of people putting an overflow of content onto social media and it being difficult to stand out on social media why should you do this well look i don't personally own the algorithm or control the algorithm on any social media platform linkedin and instagram if, if i'm reliant on those totally it's very difficult for me to control if people see my content because I don't control the notification bell and I just have to hope that they show it to people. And thirdly, if I'm building a business over three years, five years, 10 years to exit or for generational wealth or, or to have a great lifestyle, if I don't own access or own my audience, then it's really, really difficult to compound and, and grow that business over time. So with that said, let's go through what HubSpot do and talk through the various elements of it. So what do HubSpot use as their traffic source? They use YouTube. Number one, they use YouTube. They've got 188K subs, and they've got 650 videos, and they're posting regularly. Why are they doing that on YouTube and not so much on other platforms? And why am I doing it? And why do I recommend you do it? Because quite simply, We've been generating leads from YouTube. We've only got like 138 videos and we don't have a lot of watch time. Still nothing like YouTube, but we still generate leads. And why do we generate leads and why do I use YouTube? Because when you post a piece of content on YouTube, it is evergreen. What does that mean? It keeps on going, keeps on going. It doesn't disappear like on the social media platforms. And all they are doing is if you can see here, they've got a link to a website. So what they do is they push from YouTube. They push from YouTube day in, day out. That's all I'm doing. I do a YouTube video, I link to here. I do a YouTube video, I link to here, and I'm building the audience that I own. Because when I have access to email and when I have access to text message, I own that audience 
And as much as possible, obviously I don't own people, but I own access to it. I definitely run the social media platforms. I have that as an asset in my business. If I want to sell it, I can produce a list, just like all the big businesses could do. Why do you think Amazon and Apple and Walmart and Target, they're all trying to get your emails and your data so that they can market to you and have a way to reach you. So you'll notice that that's a fundamental part of their strategy. Now, do, do HubSpot do LinkedIn? I looked and they do use LinkedIn, but it's light. It's not a fundamental part of their strategy. That is to say, all their salespeople are posting and they are posting content. But when they post their content, they're going from LinkedIn to all their websites again. And they're going from Instagram to all their websites. So what is the conclusion from this? HubSpot are using their websites and their own owned digital assets in order to build their pipeline and where they choose to market to people. They are using social media to push to their own assets. And going deep on this, there's one here, which is about community inbound. There's one here, which is about how, how to guides. And there's one here, and I'll, I'll tell you what I learned about this from reading the book, which is an immediate action on their homepage. So let's jump into how they are doing this. And let's go through these one by one. The first thing they're doing is inbound. They're building a community event. Why is a community event really, really important in 2023, 2024, 2025 with AI, machine learning, and everyone putting loads of content? Because what AI can't do and what AI won't be able to do for a long, long time is to replicate real life interaction. In it interacts with people in real time. We have two ways we're doing this. We have a weekly event and I'll show you how to do the page for that in a minute using ChatGPT. So you can take this HubSpot funnel and put it in there. It's a QA mastermind. They have inbound 23, it's a bigger event. What else do they have? They have lots of guides. This would traditionally be known as a lead magnet. Do we do this? We do do this on our website through our blog. You've seen lots of people on LinkedIn do this. And this is a really, really important one here, right? Because when I read this book here, it spoke about why they have these specific call to actions here. What do I mean the specific call to action? I mean the get a demo and the get started three. They know, HubSpot know, that if people use their software, the, the data shows basically that they are very high likelihood to become a client. So how do I interpret this into what you do? Because you might not have software, you might have a professional services offer, a coaching offer, offer, an executive coaching offer. It's very simple. Solve the small problems for people and then they will trust you with the big problems. Let me repeat, small, solve the small problems for people and then they will trust you with the bigger problems. So if you haven't got a call to action on your website and if your, if your website is not a fundamental part of your strategy and it's just social media, change it again and it's going to lead to revenue growth. So let's just jump on and show you how to do this in ChatGPT, how to build a landing page. So here is the landing page format we use. I'll link to a video that goes in depth to this at the end, but I just wanna cover how you can get going and start with it because on all the landing pages, this is one here that did a, a 250 grand deal. You can see on here, live Q&A, how to detox and store agile transformations. That's the problem and using mechanism. So let's go on to chat GPT and talk through how to do this. So we'll just run with the example here of leadership coaching, whatever. Just put in here, really, really simple. Put in what are the top 10 problems a person managing a group of people with a business might interact with. Get that data, choose one. So I'm gonna choose number two. How are they trying to solve this? All right, so you've got the problem and you've got how they're going to solve it. So all you need to do now is to take the structure of the landing page, how to solve X problem without doing something they're doing now using the name of your framework. And if you don't have a framework, it's really, really important to do a framework. And I'm actually gonna link up because it's, 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 it's already quite a long video. You can choose which one you go to. I'll put here how to do the end-to-end -end landing page using ChatGPT so that you can put in these HubSpot funnels into your business. And I will put here a video on frameworks. Thank you for listening.
Have a wonderful day, all right? Bye-bye.